and oh bam hello youtubers it is of course me trollface the man and you know what i saw something from amazon that had me quite intrigued which is a 120 gigabyte ssd for the low low price of 17 dollars with shipping and no tax now, back when I built my computer, ooh, about six-ish, seven-ish years ago, I had paid $350 for a 240 gigabyte SSD. That was a Samsung one. This is only 120 gigabytes, but that is for 16 bucks. I mean, that is, that is quite an exceptional difference, and it's amazing how technology advances. Now, this isn't actually my... Uh, main computer that I do anything on. This is my entertainment PC that I built out of scavenge parts uh, using an old office computer. However, the thing uses an old mechanical drive. I'm estimating probably around from 2009 and it is very, very slow. So I thought an SSD for 17 bucks, how can I beat that? Now I did open this. I actually ordered two of these. One for a different computer that I have, and I already installed that one, it seems to have worked good. So I want to do this one, and I got into the process of opening it, and I thought, you know, I think this could make potentially for a good video, because I can actually test and show the difference with this PC uh, using this, this SSD. Now, the SSD being as small as it is, is only going to be good really for a boot drive and maybe a couple of games tops. Uh, you're going to want a secondary drive for bigger games and such, but I am a sucker for SSDs now. Since I started using them a while ago, there is just nothing that beats them when it comes to pure snappiness and responsiveness of your computer. And believe it or not, uh, SSDs really can actually increase uh, your FPS in games. Uh, it might sound crazy, but I had a laptop that had a really slow drive in there, and because of that, it wasn't able to stream assets that the games needed quick enough. Uh, that's also a RAM limitation, and just by adding an SSD into there, uh, some of the games went from being unplayable to halfway decent. Now, that is a very specific use case, in which case my laptop didn't have enough RAM, so it was forcing streaming off of the drive. <clears throat> so having a much faster drive in there made a difference, but even still, certain games, SSDs, and their extra bandwidth can make a difference. Now this is a Kingston SSD. The SSD I bought a while ago was a Samsung, and I pretty much have stuck with Samsung SSDs for all of my very important data. Once again, this is going to be a streaming PC. Or not streaming PC, a PC used for entertainment like streaming uh, media like Netflix and uh, Funimations and stuff. With any of my really important data, especially at this price point, uh, I always trust Samsung, but for this specific use case and non-critical data, this is one heck of a deal. I'm very excited to see how this changes the whole playing field for this PC. So I have myself a SATA cable. I should point out that I, I do upgrade and build computers quite often, so I do have spare parts. This is an office computer, so I have that SATA cable. And I also have this adapter, this Molex to the, uh, the SATA power adapter, and that should probably be used because I'm assuming that there's not going to be extra ones on this power supply. So this is a very bare bones PC I got here. It has, um, man I can't even really remember. I know it's a quad core i5 processor. I believe that the base clock is 3.3 gigahertz and it boosts only to like 3.7. Not particularly fast, just an office CPU. Works great for what I need. And then I have an MSI uh, a 640, an MSI uh, 640 graphics card in there. Eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, I think at 1333. 
Yeah, so 1333, uh, this is running in dual channel. Now, being a very old office computer uh, from the time that it was, whenever that may have been, um, once again, I'm guessing somewhere in the later 2000, uh, you know, nine or so, it doesn't have really any very easily accessible mounting brackets for these three inch drives. And uh, one of my sort of favorite things to do when that isn't the case is to make one myself. What I have here is Velcro tape. I'm gonna take the cuts. It's gonna be approximately the size of this SSD. Double-sided tape works well too. Cut it into shape. Stick them together. Oh, important step. Almost forgot. So before uh, sticking this down anywhere, you're gonna wanna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. This is 70%. You need 70 through 90 is best. And whatever surface you're going to stick it down to, you're going to want to clean it off first. And I'm planning on sticking right here. However, I have to make sure if I do stick right there, I might actually have to stick it this way. Just as I suspected, I will need to use this adapter. Oh shoot, this is actually the opposite adapter than what I needed. Give me one second. So, uh, of course, no big surprise. I had several adapters, but apparently they're all uh, females. And I actually needed a, a male head here and then a female here, or I needed a male adapting to uh, this female head. But all is not lost, because this actually simplifies things. I was going to have to install a separate SATA cable and a separate power. However, seeing as we're stuck at this anyways, what I can do is simply go the cheatsy route and say goodbye to the old CD drive. I mean, when's the last time I've used a CD drive anyways? It's been quite a while. So I'm just going to take the connectors straight from the CD drive and then plug them into this SSD this way and this way. Now can I... Because I like, I like mounting the stuff where you can actually see like the, the front of it see that there's an SSD in here. I think that this might be a valid way to go about it. I'm all about performance and not really beauty on this. I think that that can work. Or, right down here. Maybe I should put it down here, because up here, uh, by the power supply where I was trying to mount it might get a little bit warm. This will probably stay a lot cooler, but I might not get as good a grip on this, but oh well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this Velcro uh, tape, stick it to the back here, take my rubbing alcohol, make sure this is cleaned off first, and you want to make sure it dries before trying to stick it on, of course. Velcro tape peel off, and Bam. That is actually stuck on there. Actually pulling pretty hard right now. Pretty good. That is definitely going to be fine. Especially seeing as this isn't a mechanical drive, it's not going to have a, a spinning platter that's going to, you know, have issues with vibrations or bumping the case. It's nice old solid state. It's one of the benefits of it. And uh, yeah, that is going to be a little dirty upgrade. Now let's see how well it actually enhances the performance. Now uh, keep in mind, if you do upgrade to a solid state, it's not 
going to show up right away in your um, in your uh, like drives. You're going to have to partition it first. I'll link a video on how to partition drives. Um, how to partition drives uh, in the description. It's it's super stupidly simple though. If you're in Windows 10, you just go to create or format a partition. Uh, you find the drive, which will say uh, unallocated space. You right click, create new volume, and then you create the volume uh, pretty much automatically, and then everything should be able to run. But I need to do something a little more complicated, which is actually clone the uh, all the old disk over to this new one. And when I do that, I'll be able to run. Uh, boot off of both of them and we'll see what the the difference is in speed wise and I am assure you that it is going to probably be pretty substantial if this uh, SSD really has SSD performance. Now they say 10 times faster than a 7200 RPM HDD or hard disk drive. Uh, I would take that with one of the most major grains of salt you can find because uh, in reality over a 7200 RPM hard disk drive an SSD is probably going to be double speed maybe a little bit more when it comes to solid read and write speeds what, what it really has the benefit is is when it's a burst reading something uh, in which case, yeah, it can be much, much quicker than an, S or an HDD, but don't expect all suddenly for your computer to run 10 times faster. That's uh, not, not really how it works. So, the question remains, is a 120 gigabyte SSD upgrade for $17 from HDD to SSD worth it? Hell yeah. But it depends on the circumstances. You see, you shouldn't just go onto eBay and find some no-name brand SSD for as cheap as possible and put it in your computer because you're going to have a really, really bad time. However, in a case like this, Kingston is at least an established brand of SSD and the price is very hard to beat. Now, I would not trust a $17 SSD with my crucial, integral, irreplaceable data. I just wouldn't. It's not saying that Kingston SSDs or Kingston SSDs are necessarily bad. It's just that they're, they're cheap. They're meant to be cheap. And because of this, they tend to use cheaper technology when it comes to memory longevity and when it comes to cell wear leveling. I myself personally use Samsung SSDs for any of my crucial, crucial data. I have a Samsung SSD in my main computer that's over seven years old and it has worked wonderfully and according to the program provided, it supposedly says that it's still in good shape, uh, being that, you know, cells are all good and it hasn't had that much wear on it. Even though I do video production, which requires a lot of transferring of files, it's still supposed to be pretty good which is impressive. Then I have another half a gigabyte Samsung SSD in my laptop, which has been working great and was one of the best upgrades I've ever made for that laptop. I have two crucial SSDs, uh, MX500 that I use in my PlayStation 3 and my PS4, which isn't as integral of data. So, and this is my first two Kingston SSDs ever. And I'm pretty happy. Uh, like I said, this would be a good upgrade if you're trying to go from a slow boot, putting your operating system on it to really speed things up, or if you have a couple of games in your library that you want to whop on an SSD uh, and get enhanced loading times. This is definitely, definitely good for that, so long as you either A, keep a backup, or B, don't use it for very, very important data. Once again, not saying that it's bad. It's just that that's my personal opinion. I'd rather pay 30% more for an SSD that I feel is going to be more secure, more, more stable, more long lasting. Even if I'm paying this 30% premium for 10% better reliability, in my mind, that is a majorly valid reason 
in order to uh, pay the extra price. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, a pretty big YouTuber named Nighthawk and Light, uh, when I was over his house when we were recording a uh, video on fire breathing, he had Kingston SSDs in his computer, once again, if I remember correctly, and he's been using them for, I believe, two years, and he says that they've worked wonderfully. So, aniseed evidence might speak pretty good for him. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, please remember to hit that like button to subscribe and stay tuned for other videos. Thank you very much to my Patreons, whose general support has helped me pay for stuff for videos. Not this particularly, this was my own investment, but uh, has helped me pay for supplies for other videos and stuff, and I definitely appreciate that. And uh, thanks for over 28,000 followers, subscribers. That is a pretty amazing number, and uh, I just hope you guys will continue to view, uh, leave comments, and show your support. Thank you guys very much for watching, and bye!